All right, a good Tuesday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist John Dawson. Glad you found us here on YouTube or Fox 26 Houston.com getting the latest information on the tropics. And of course, just a reminder, we're here every day of the week, every day of hurricane season talking about whatever's happening out there, whether there's a big old hurricane to talk about or whether there's not that much to talk about. We'll certainly be here uh, as we continue to look at barrel and its possible uh, impacts on the United States and anywhere else in the world. I do want to remind you that we're constantly preparing for hurricane season and really emergency preparedness in general. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is meteorologist John Dawson, if you search meteorologist John Dawson on YouTube, that's going to give you a fantastic resource of all of my hurricane gear tests and you can begin to sort of think through some of your projects and some of your planning that needs to take place. And again, you'll see some really cool products and hear my opinion on them, but more importantly, it gets you thinking about what you need to be doing kind of maybe something you haven't thought of or a reminder for you to check something you did think of but you need to update that kind of stuff again meteorologist John Dawson search for that on YouTube you'll find my channel it'd be great for you to take a look at some of those videos to help in your preparations barrel now a category four hurricane as it continues to move through the Caribbean our next major concern is Jamaica as far as land masses and as I mentioned yesterday uh, we've been uh, aware that there's a lot of folks here in the Caribbean that are watching our video. So this isn't, even though I'm in Houston, uh, it's not just people in Southeast Texas that are watching and taking a look at these tropical updates. It's all over the world and especially here in the Caribbean. So we're thankful that you're checking in with us. We're gonna try to keep you updated as best we can. And we know and we think about everybody that's dealing with this situation. Again, the Windward Islands was what was kind of hit first. We certainly now see some impacts uh, on uh, some other areas and Jamaica though, a possible landfall is something that we're beginning to look uh, at a little bit closer. So as we see these rain bands, you can see they're impacting Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic around into Haiti. It's going to be a little bit more active as these strong storms continue to wrap around this pretty well defined eye that we have uh, in the storm. I need to correct myself. I, uh, I'm sorry. It, it still is a category four. Those max winds at 155. Now this is the 4 p.m. This is central time 4 p.m. Update from the National Hurricane Center. The speed of this system is still pretty quick, still moving at around 22 miles an hour. Anytime I see it over 20, I, 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 I sort of associate that as a fairly quick movement. 10 to 15 is kind of more of an average type of a speed. So when you see that over 20, I'm going to call that a fairly quick moving storm system. Uh, we've got those max winds, as I mentioned, at about 155 miles an hour. That's a cat four, and it looks like the next update is going to or the next track is going to be coming at around 10 PM, and we're going to look at that track right now as far as where we see this system going. So here we are Tuesday 4 PM that category four. As I mentioned, Jamaica is our next concern as far as a potential landfall. Certainly we talked about the rain bands and what they're going to be doing uh, eventually interacting with Cuba as well, but this is going to come very close. Well, all of the whole cone uh, is surrounding Jamaica, so that's going to be where we're looking at a possibility of a category three hurricane with the current expectations. And again, this is slowly shrinking in its strength and possibly even a category one by the time it makes a landfall into the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, after that, still high question marks as far as where this system is going and what the impacts will be. But you can now see that there is definitely part of the state of Texas now within the cone of possibilities. And as always, we we always just everybody wants to just look right at the center and and assume that this is where it's going to go. And certainly that's what we would like to have happen with our forecasting that's taking place. But we have to remember that there's the possibility that this center of circulation could be anywhere within this cone. So if it tracks more on this edge of the cone, well, all of the impacts are going to be able to reach much further to the north, including more parts of the United States. If this tracks further to the south, on the other, this other edge of the cone, well, less likely to see those impacts happening uh, into the United States. And this is where I want to just take a moment to remind us 
about her, her um, sorry, tropical storm Alberto that we had earlier this year. That was a storm that made landfall into the east coast of Mexico. But for us there here in the Houston and Galveston area, probably 450 miles away from the center of that circulation, we certainly felt impacts. We had quite a bit of rain bands that came in. We had high surf uh, and rough surf, high tides, strong rip currents, and that kind of activity is going to happen all the way down the coast. So we, we, want, we probably wouldn't have hurricane force winds, and we certainly didn't with Alberto, but that's just the kind of the reminder that when we talk about impacts, it could be something that's a relatively minor, or it could be something stronger. Again, if it wants to track further on the northern edge, that's going to be something that definitely gets our attention. This latest track from the Hurricane Center does actually take that center part of our track and slide it just slightly further to the south, which again for us here in Houston, that's some relatively good news. Noting, of course, that this is tropical storm strength, it's a very strong tropical storm, almost a hurricane. All of that, a lot of information here in this original looking at the cone, but I want to show you again, 74 mile an hour winds would be a hurricane. So that tropical storm expectations of the Gulf of Mexico, it's only four miles an hour away from a hurricane. So you might as well call that a, a potential hurricane at this point. And that 157 is when we're at a cat five. We're at a, a cat four right now because of the 155 on the maximum sustained winds, those estimates that are being made. So everything that I just kind of talked about kind of as far as that tracking goes is here uh, in this map. As we continue to see the basic track here, as we get towards the uh, further away from the current location, if it was a little bit of a stronger storm, it'll track a little closer to the north. And also that'll depend a lot on the strength of this high pressure. A little bit of a weaker storm, it'll want to continue to go sh sort of more or less straight uh, and end up further to the south and into the east coast of Mexico. So just the strength in itself helps to steer it, but also this high pressure system and its strength and its location will also help to steer that system as well. And at the moment, we are continuing to think that this system is not going to maintain. Well, it's already not a cat five anymore, but it's not going to maintain its category four strength uh, as it continues to move through the Caribbean. And here's a little bit of an explanation on why we're going to have some wind shear, which is winds that are up high, kind of making it difficult to strengthen, but also some drier air and some dust that's going to kind of get sucked into a little bit. So these darker shadings here showing that drier air and this is where we've got uh, our system right now uh, barrel. And as we move forward, you'll notice that this drier air is starting to interact more with the barrel. And as we get even further, watch how this drier air gets wrapped around it a little bit. That's when it really starts impacting its uh, trying to continue to strengthen. And so that's one of the reasons why we do expect this to, uh, again, to fall apart a little bit not completely, but to definitely decrease in its size and its strength. Here is the expectations. This is a probability graphic of hurricane force winds. So obviously very close to where the system is, you have much higher probabilities, but as it gets closer into Jamaica, we're certainly going to be looking for some hurricane force winds, uh, even if it's not a, a direct the shot, we're certainly going to see that. So category four hurricane is what we're looking at right now. We expect it to be a category three as it gets much closer to Jamaica. So the, the weakening is expected to continue and then high uncertainty once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. And it doesn't even have to make a direct landfall in Texas to have impacts. There will certainly be some impacts if it's even somewhere close to Texas. Here's a look at those stirring, steering currents again. That high pressure that I talked about is going to continue to kind of help sort of position where this system goes as that high pressure is retreating a little further over to the east. You're also going to see it weaken a little bit and that's going to be impacting sort of that direction that it's expected to be heading as it continues to move to the west. Now, the first computer model that I was showing you there was our Fox model. It's exclusive to the, all the Fox owned stations uh, and as well as Fox weather. But here is uh, another one of our models that we use. And you'll notice that as this system continues to track on through, 
will run this one just a little bit longer, keeping out here into the Gulf of Mexico. And this is on Friday. So as we get it to the end of the week, we will expect this to be pretty much in the Gulf of Mexico. And then here we are looking for a possible landfall. This model putting that landfall right on that border of Texas and New Mexico. That's going to be Sunday morning. I think this might be a little quick as far as what we're looking for, but we'll have to see how things unfold. This is our wind field right now where we've got hurricane force winds in close. Those tropical storm force winds are still um, reaching out and having some land interaction. And as we talked about, once it gets into Jamaica, for sure, uh, we're going to be able to see that. Got to pause for just a minute of our barrel discussion, and I want to point out what's happening a little further out. There's one other area of invest that the National Hurricane Center has been watching, and these uh, chances are continuing to drop. 20% chance over the next seven days that it would develop, and our computer model is showing that it does want to sort of continue to track the way barrel did, but then you'll notice some of our models are maybe taking it even up north into the Atlantic. That's a possibility. This system is not defined it's very low chances at this point that it would become tropical, but it is just something else that we're keeping an eye on and aware of that's out there. Chris uh, was that short lived storm that went into the coast of Mexico. Bar Barrel was able to make it to a cat five and then Debbie will be the next name. I'm not really confident that we'll see that from that uh, invest area that's out there, but that would be um, the name if it were to get organized. Now it's been interesting. I've been looking at a lot of things on social media and a lot of people are bringing up different tracks in the past of some stronger storms and how they've had their impact. One of the most popular ones that I've heard is back in 2005, July, that was also a July storm. We saw Emily's uh, beginning to form and track. And this system took a very similar course where it moved through very far to the south across the Caribbean. And then as it continued to move on through, this did move a little further north across the Yucatan Peninsula than what we're expecting Burl to do. But it maintained its hurricane strength as it did. And then it even strengthened as it moved a little bit closer to shore. Certainly a possibility that something like that could happen with barrel. Not as favored right now to see that. I have trouble seeing how it won't be able to at least maintain hurricane force strength. I don't think from what I've seen that it would become a category three, a major hurricane at landfall. But I do think that what Emily did as far as being able to hold itself together, move across the Yucatan Peninsula and maintain hurricane strength. I think that there's enough warm water and conditions are favorable enough that we could see barrel like Emily become a hurricane or at least or either 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 reform into a hurricane either maintain that hurricane strength once it enters into the Gulf of Mexico now impacts I'm not trying to predict those or what that's going to be happening but at this point I, I just I could totally see uh, that barrel would be able to stay a hurricane once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Here we are in the last 12 hours as we continue to watch this system move through uh, the Caribbean and its impacts now on Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic and Haiti. Um, Getting a closer look, our hurricane hunters have continued to fly into the storm. Remember, they like to fly through the eye of the storm if they can and then help kind of track the different pressure and wind speeds. All, just about any kind of weather measurement that you can imagine that they're doing that by putting those drop sons out of the planes and getting those measurements as it falls and sending that information back uh, into the National Hurricane Center. So here's that storm again as it continues to march on through. I talked about this area of invest. You can see clearly from the satellite imagery, it's not very well organized and nothing like what we see with barrel right now at this strong category four storm. We'll again watch this. It's something the Hurricane Center is watching, but just not favored at the moment. If you're just sort of catching in and you missed that track at the beginning, I'll kind of roll through the track here again on what these expectations are. Category four hurricane. We're concerned with Jamaica for another possible landfall. At this track, it looks like it would barely 
clip uh, Jamaica and make a landfall, but it's well within this cone. So that's certainly something that we're going to be concerned with, possibly even 120 mile an hour wind. So it could still be a major hurricane when it does make that landfall and then continuing to weaken because of the drier air and the shear. And then depending on what type of conditions it meets once it gets back out into the Gulf of Mexico. As we talked about, just barely not a hurricane. 70 mile an hour winds so close to being a hurricane, but technically a tropical storm. And that's what our official forecast track from the Hurricane Center has going for it. So that's going to do it for our tropical update. Glad you checked in. As always, we're here every day. Make sure you check in again tomorrow. Now, for those of you here in Southeast Texas, glad you've made it, found us here following the Caroline and Rashi show, keeping you up to date with what's happening in the tropics is, of course, a high priority, but we also want to talk about what's happening here in Houston. The heat advisory has not been reissued yet for tomorrow. I'm not saying it won't be, but for now we haven't seen it reissued yet for tomorrow. We'll see what the National Weather Service wants to do on that, but we know it's going to be hot and humid and I am going to have slightly higher chances for some rain in the forecast for tomorrow. Wednesday and then Thursday we will drop them back down just a little bit. I think that'll be good for all of our 4th of July plans, but I talked about in our tropical discussions this high pressure that we're definitely tracking and you can see as it kind of weakens. Here comes barrel into the Gulf of Mexico and then we track see what happens and at the moment we're looking for a possible landfall very close uh, to the, the border of Texas and Mexico. And you'll notice once we get into Monday here, technically this maybe would be remnants of barrel at this point in time, assuming that it were to keep a course like this. This is a long way out. Monday is a long way from now, but you'll notice definitely going to have some rain that would be coming along with it. So that's some of those impacts that we were talking about. We don't have to have those dangerous winds. We can have a lot of rain. Uh, we can have some of those surfs that are high and the, the strong rip currents, things like that are certainly impacts that could be across the area. So for now, I've got 30% chance of rain for Wednesday, 20% chance for Thursday. We'll hold that steady for Friday, and then you'll see these chances increasing over the weekend. I've got 40 right now, but probably going to want to increase those a little bit more uh, as we get closer to the weekend because we're looking for those rain possibilities somewhat connected that tropical moisture connected to barrel as it is into the is in the Gulf of Mexico, sending that moisture our direction, whether it's an indirect or a direct impact. We're certainly going to have some extra chances for rain that are associated with that in just a little bit. All right, that's going to do it for our weather update. Thanks for checking in with us. 45 minutes from now, I expect to see you right back here. However, you're watching me right now. Come back. We'll do the five o'clock news uh, and we'll stay updated.